Welcome to Essential 123 QuickBooks Tutorials. My name is Jamie Hudson. I'm a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor and owner of Essential123.com. We hope you enjoy your QuickBooks tutorials today and please visit us at Essential123.com often as we do update our screencast regularly. Thank you and hope you enjoy. Okay, today we're going to talk about 1099s, setting up our QuickBooks data file to track, print, and report 1099s. First thing that we need to do is check our vendor menu to see if we have that option available. So we're going to click on vendors in the gray menu bar. And we're going to look for an option that is called print 1099s slash 1096. And we don't have that option here in our gray menu bar. So we're going to turn that on. And we want to do that by going all the way over to edit in the gray menu bar and preferences. We want to make sure that we select the tax 1099 option from all of the options here. And we want to click on the company preference tab. This is where we're going to tell QuickBooks, yes, we do print the form 1099s. Then we're going to say, okay. Once we go back to our vendor menu in the gray menu bar, we now have our option print 1099s slash 1096. Once we click on that, we get our 1099 and 1096 wizard. This is a step-by-step -step process to walk you through how to set up all of your accounts and vendors to print your 1099s. The first thing that it wants you to do is run a report of all your vendors. This is where you're going to check your vendor setup and make sure that you have all the information necessary in each vendor setup to print your 1099s. Things like tax ID number and city, state, and zip and address. In this case, we do have a vendor here, Express Delivery Service, with some missing information. If they were one of our 1099 vendors, we'd want to go in there and update that information in the vendor center. So once we're satisfied with this report, we can go ahead and close it and go back to our 1099 wizard. We are now going to tell QuickBooks which accounts on our chart of accounts to look for with 1099 reporting by clicking that map accounts. The two most common 1099s that you're going to be sending out are going to be for rent and for non-employee compensation, which is going to be things like subcontracted services and professional fees. For rent, that's pretty simple. Most companies are going to have one account on their chart of accounts for rent. So we're just going to scroll down our chart of accounts here until we get to rent. And QuickBooks puts in this threshold of $600. That means that we need to report a 1099 to any person that we pay more than $600 in rent to. Same thing for the non-employee compensation. It also has a $600 threshold. Now those thresholds are automatically put in there by QuickBooks. You don't have to worry about what those are or putting them in when you set the 1099 preference that yes, you're filing them. It's updated and automatically in there for you. So you don't have to worry about that. For the non-employee compensation, more than likely we're gonna have more than one account that we paid subcontracted services for or professional fees. So we're gonna choose multiple accounts. When this comes up, we want to make sure that we're clicked on manual because we're going to tell QuickBooks which accounts to look for. We want to choose things like maintenance and repair and things like labor, job labor. That's going to be more than likely where our subcontracted services are. We also want to look for things like professional fees. There's our accounting and legal fees and repairs and maintenance, more repairs and maintenance. So once we have all of the accounts in here for services, we want to say OK, and then OK again. Next, QuickBooks wants you to run a report that will show you a summary of your 1099 data. Go ahead and click Run Report. And don't panic if you've gotten a zero report as I have here. That just means we have a few preferences that we need to check on this report. First of all, we want to look and make sure that we have last calendar year selected for the date. In this case, our sample company file has 2012 as their last company year. We also want to check things like our thresholds, the allowed accounts, and the only 1099 vendors. The thresholds are those $600 thresholds that we talked about a minute ago when we mapped those accounts. The allowed accounts are going to be those accounts that we have mapped. And the 1099 vendors are all of the vendors that we have flagged in the vendor setup to be eligible for 1099s. Now, if we didn't flag any vendors, 
that's okay, we can choose from this drop down to show all of our vendors. There we go, now we have some data. And we can see in our non employee compensation column that we've paid computer services by DJ and patio and desk design quite a bit here over our thresholds in the non employee compensation. So we want to make sure that computer services by DJ and patio and desk design are flagged as 1099 vendors. To do so, we're going to go to the vendor center and we're going to find computer services by DJ and click edit vendor. In the vendor setup here we're going to click the additional info tab and in this lower left hand side we're going to click vendor is eligible for 1099. We also want to make sure at this time that they do have a tax ID number in here for this particular vendor. So we're going to say OK. Then we're going to do the same thing for patio and desk design. We're going to edit that vendor, click our additional info tab, and also check box that vendor is eligible for 1099 field. Now we can say OK and close out of our vendor center. Now if we go back to our report, and change our 1099 option to say only 1099 vendors. There we go. So those are the two 1099 vendors that we're going to be sending the 1099s to. Once we're satisfied with this report that we've got all of our vendors in there that we need flagged to send a 1099 to, we can exit out of this report and go back to our summary here of our 1099 wizard. And the last option is of course print 1099s. We want to again choose the last calendar year and say OK. This window that pops up to print will give us a little bit of a summary of that report, the summary report that we just pulled up. Same information, we've got two vendors and how much we have paid them. At this point, you should be putting in your 1099 forms into your printer and hitting the print 1099 forms. Now 1099 forms are available directly through Intuit and there is a link on your homepage for supplies ordering or you can go to any local office supply store to pick those up as well. Let's take a quick preview and see what our 1099s look like. Our 1099s are going to show our name and address, our tax ID, their tax ID, and their name and address and amount that we paid them. And that's are printing 1099s and 1099s. Thank you for watching. We do hope you found our tutorial to be informative and useful. Your feedback and comments are welcome. Send us a note to the email address that you see on your screen. And just to let you know, we do also offer live seminars, remote login assistance, video conference, group training, and one-on-one -on -one instruction. For more information about these services, do visit essential123.com. Thank you.